Denial could be said to be a game we play when we think time is on our side. But what happens when we're running out of time? I'm going to talk about the COVID-19 and Nigeria. Indeed, are we in denial? Because a lot has been said about how lucky Nigeria and the rest of Africa have been with regards to the very low reported cases of coronavirus incidents. Some have even said it is because we are black and melanin and all sorts of talk about immunity and so on and so forth. However, truth is we're beginning to see a worrying uptick in the number of cases, especially as with reported cases coming to Africa, with people for coming to business for business, for leisure, or returning Africans who unknowingly carry, carry this virus and infect others, as the virus in most people is simply asymptomatic. This is perhaps why the coronavirus is very deadly. Because for many who go around, they're not, unknowingly they're not, they don't know they're carrying the virus and are exposing others, especially family and friends who may not even know that they're carrying the virus. For most persons, the virus does not present any symptoms for, as we, we've been told, for up to 10, maybe 12 days. And by then, many people will have been exposed to it, which is why many governments have taken the rather drastic measures of restricting travel and movement within their states and even stopping people from coming into their countries and internally um, with regards to gatherings and public spaces. Well, so yesterday, or two days ago, we heard the Nigerian government says that they're going to restrict travel from 13 countries, which is good news because everybody was worried before then and people were clamoring for travel restrictions to be, to be put in place like Ghana did, like South Africa have done, like Egypt and so many other countries. Um, this came maybe two weeks late, but it's better than nothing. Clearly, and this is a fact, we do not have enough test kits or the medical infrastructure to deal with a full-blown COVID epidemic. That's the reality. Take, for example, Lassa fever is still killing hundreds of people every year in the country. And we, clearly, we don't have the infrastructure to deal with that, let alone um, um, the coronavirus. Look, maybe, and I see this as a, the, the fact, I hope that the fact that we defeated Ebola is not making us feel complacent. There's this thing where we keep thinking that, oh, because we, we dealt with Ebola in how many weeks, therefore, but this is a wholly and entirely different disease. The fact is, corona is not Ebola. Coronavirus is even more contagious, and it does not present symptoms in most cases. And given our propensity to dislike data, as well as the debt of logistics infrastructure made worse by our present economic situation, I'll talk about the state of our healthcare, we should worry, as I worry. But not to panic, though, um, because panic causes more problems. But I think that the measures that the government has put in place with regards to the travel restrictions are very welcome. But we should be more careful, at least on a personal level. You know, we should carry around this little thing, wash our hands as often as possible, um, have sanitizers in the car, in the kitchen, at the home entrances. Let us be more proactive and protect ourselves and our families. That's it for me. You have basically said everything that needs to be said. Mm. So. Um, apart from re-echoing the fact that um, I see that um, government is actually not sincere with the numbers because um, like I always would use the word, it's a practical impossibility with the non-availability of this um, infrastructure for them to even be able to track all the um, people that you're talking about. Because in some, even some that have you know, come out to request for um, um, the attention, yes. it took them time. In some case, states that boosted to us, like Enugu State, that they, in fact they are prepared. We saw just one case there, and we saw where they kept the woman. You know, was dehumanizing. Uh, Lagos State initially too also said they have a hundred bed space mm. until uh, Punch exposed mm. the, <laughs> the unpreparedness. <laughs> you know, so I think for me, it's, we all are governments at our various level in Nigeria. So mm. we should take our personal hygiene seriously because if you wait for these people to to attend to you, because it's like we are waiting for you know somebody to get the virus and they will begin to react. We are reactionary people. If you are waiting for government. You might as well just be hanging a rope around your neck and waiting for somebody to push you. So let's take our personal hygiene seriously. No, I would say that the um, yeah. coronavirus has really challenged the, yeah. glo the globe uh, in its entirety. So I, I wouldn't necessarily even put Nigeria's reaction down too much, even though I'm not saying I'm not scoring them above 50. But I'm saying I understand that a lot of people were 
caught off guard. Mm. You know, if you look at Italy, yes, if you look at even America, the UK, even a lot America. of people that were on the back foot because they didn't really take it seriously until it hits home. So even some of these measures like travel bans, the horse has bolted in most cases already in the community. Mm. But I appreciate, I'm happy that they're responding. And I think some of what has led to their responding now is some of this media, you know, people are poking at them and mm -hmm. saying, you said this, and exposing them. And I think that's healthy. I think we need to stay, keep them on their toes. A bit like um, Uche's advocacy, we need to continue to challenge them, whether it's if you put out a bill that's rubbish. It actually makes a difference. People shouldn't say we're tired of talking, because it's that talking that is like a naming and shaming that's making them put up the right kind of response, it, albeit a packaged one, but they're being forced to give an account mm. of their stewardship. So I think, yes, it's right, social distancing, like I'm just repeating what Emeka said, wash your hands, do all the necessary things, but don't panic, don't even worry. I'm not even, I'm not sure I can distinguish between worry and panic. Don't even worry, mm. do what you can. Recognize that there's some things that are beyond you, but having done what you can, relax and, and get on with your life. Mm. Mm. I, think we, I think we can learn lessons from other countries. The truth is that the coronavirus has not properly arrived in Nigeria. When I say properly, the, the kind of way it we has... We hope it doesn't. In, and we <laughs> yeah. hope it doesn't. Yeah. If, it, if, it does, if it does arrive the way it is in other countries, we can't cope. That's a fact. Mm. Um, you know. But what is important, though, is that it hasn't yet. And uh, uh, um, because if it had, we would know whether... You know, because you can't hide it anymore. Yeah. There would be sickness everywhere. Mm, yeah. But that to think that people believed what the minister was saying... Uh, and, and started praising the countries, what shocks me. What Nothing in Nigeria is. works properly. Nigeria is built on lies. Mm -hmm. And so there's no way it could have been 100% accurate that there were only two people or that it was only one mm -hmm. man from Italy. We are not truthful people. So the best thing is how America has put it. Just prepare yourself. And stop, you know, we don't. I mean, we, but you on know, a global context, that's what I'm saying. Russia, see, Chuka, Russia and North Korea, how Chuka, truthful are they being? They did, they did, they did. No, no, we're, we're not, not we, necessarily we too be, we, shouldn't be North, we shouldn't be North Korea. Or, or even Russia. Russia. You know, where we never were built to be like that. Or even you take it conversely, the Italians who are going and saying so many people are dying, it's like mm. almost sensationalizing it. So many uh, people out of those you've tested. You know, so we need to still put it in context. I'm not really into all this scare, but, uh, scare tactic uh, uh, reporting. Okay, I agree with you because for me, you, the only the, the media is reporting more of the dead than those that have survived. Yeah. Uh, my land, Wuhan had uh, only one know, person left. Um, no, they've they've reopened for they have business now. Mm. Uh, they've reopened for business. And they shut you know? down some of the the they, last also, cheap All of this also, hospital. but then the issue is you talked about the minister. You know when this uh, news broke of the, the Italian. The Minister for State, I was in this same studio when he was interviewed in the morning, and I told them... Um, oh, Mamora? Yes, Mamora. And I told um, the presenter that the minister was not talking like a medical doctor. Mm. Okay, what did and he that, say? Which minister? Mamora? Mamora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, he wasn't but, talking like yeah, a medical no, he, doctor. He doesn't, he doesn't well, what, talk what, like what, that. What were that, your problems? Um, he, does. He, he, mm. he spoke more like, you know, for me, like... Yeah. You know, I, I know professional. I, mean, I didn't realize it, it, was it like comes that. down to the individuals okay. for us to have more information mm. and credible information at yeah. our disposal. I mm. think that's one of the things we expect government mm. to do more in, in terms of public mm. information, yeah. Yeah. public sensitization. But, but again, at an individual level, this thing about you know at a very social distances, you know, and washing our hands mm -hmm. and just personal hygiene is it's it's the key. Yeah. But I think the most important thing is is really to maintain some level of of preparedness yes. in terms of the things, how we, you know, uh, because... And look, I think people should also be responsible in the way they engage with information. There's so much staring up on WhatsApp. It, it is, it is video. Well, I mean, this oh, is what I wanted it, to come in on. I think, you know, I think actually this. the media... I don't listen to The media needs to be them. held... Um, accountable yes. for that because I think they have been completely irresponsible yeah. with the way they've gone about it. Have you mm. watched CNN lately? No. Have you watched um, any of these but channels? It, but, but I, you know, uh, the reason why I go against all this panic, panic. I hate panic. It's so period. unproductive. And yeah. um, all I'm for, for me, sorry, quickly, you find out that in the absence of organized information, mm. you know, unorganized information will exactly. take the space. Yeah. And, and so that's why you now find everybody throwing out information mm -hmm. there. So I'm in a panic mode. And that's why, you know, every with society... The conspiracy theories. Every society, especially Africa, I don't want to bother myself with European mm. or America because for them, even if you have malaria, they quarantine you. Mm. Yeah. So there are, for, for us here, there should be constructive information, you know, and not the I, I praise the Lagos State Commissioner for Health, though, 
you know, with the way he, he talks more like a medical doctor than even our two yeah. ministers. I, you know, so, so if we so, have those kind of organized yeah. management, it will be very easy and... Uh, okay. So, guys, <laughs> being proactive means being prompt to take the necessary actions. Um, your feedback spells proactivity, where we are concerned and we value this input. It is Women's Month, and the conversation is about the ladies. On Woman to Woman, Shade Olajubu says, So very well said. Having not lived in Nigeria for close to three decades, I do find the pretentiousness, airs, and graces of many of our Niger women folk rather tiresome. The quality of a woman's life is not determined by the shoes worn, bags carried, expensiveness of the weave or the title. Is that what we are passing on to the next generation, she asks? False values or the usual rhetoric of do you know who I am? Which I experienced at the airport when flying out the last time. I was in Nigeria, she says. Sad, truly sad. Also on the topic, Ifi Oji says, this is so me. You are speaking for more women than you realize. On the complete edition, Tyler says, awesome content. Keep up the amazing content. Thanks for all your feedback. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Well, America clearly has the people touch, but can the same be said for our representatives in leadership? I'll speak more on this topic after the break. <laughs>